Hi, I'm Dr. Rob Silverman, Amazon best-selling author of Inside Out Health and ACA Sports Council Chiropractor of the Year 2015. Today, I want to talk about the psoas muscle. In my 20 years of clinical experience, I can tell you that every time I've positively affected the tone and the position of the psoas muscle, people's back pain have decreased precipitously. So let's take a look. Let's go right to the anatomy of the psoas muscle. I'm going to lift up my spine uh, or my fake spine here, you know, Romeo, and we're going to look at the psoas muscle. The anatomy of the psoas muscle is very simply from T12, the bottom of the thoracic region, all the way through L5, not touching the L5 disc. It misks misses that disc. With that being said, it allows for lateral spinal stability and it also allows you to hip flex, lift your leg up in this manner. As it crosses, it also is on the ilium, the sacrum, and actually goes to the femur right here and attaches to the lesotrochanter in the femur. It's the only spinal muscle that attaches to the spine, sacrum, ilium, and actually goes to an extremity. Now, when you look at the position here, anteriorly, most people think that when they activate it, they're activating their abdominals. So for instance, when someone does a sit up, it's not only damaging to your lower spine because you're flexing at your lumbar spine, you're also tightening your psoas. So it's locking you, that psoas, in what we call interior pelvic tilt and slamming in those posterior joints. So a lot of people always say, I feel a burn right here. The burn that they're feeling, that sensation, is tightening the psoas, which is not a very good thing for overall spinal health. In addition, people like to do leg raises. So when they do leg raises, again, they're activating and tightening the psoas, providing pressure and again, pressure which leads to a position of the spine that is not advantageous for overall spine health. So when you activate your psoas, typically activation of your psoas is not what we call spine sparing. Now, also within the psoas, you have muscles in the back that mirror it called the quadratus laborum. They're hip hiking muscles. So this cascades from the front of the spine to the back of the spine. The psoas is the most posterior anterior muscle in the lower back. It's highly overlooked in a lot of manual therapists. It's one of the biggest things you can do to release the psoas if you have lower back pain. One of the best ways to release the psoas is to put the patient on their side, make a contact with their psoas, and release their psoas very simply by releasing it and bringing the leg back. You can also have a patient lie face up, come in here and release the psoas, and this also exposes that muscle. There's laser therapy that I've seen to be very effective releasing muscular contractions. When the psoas is tight, it inhibits the gluteus maximus muscle. So when you don't have your gluteus maximus muscle firing, it also contributes to lower back pain because you want to always fire your muscles from bottoms up to avoid lower back pain. If your glute is in firing, you have to fire your lower back muscles and then you feel that tension in the lower back. So psoas is a critical element, T12 to L5, really want to avoid it. And one of the best ways to avoid tightening it is through front planks, proper side planks, bird dogs, and bracing. No crunches, no sit-ups, no leg raises. Anytime you have lower back, look to your psoas. Hope to see you soon. Dr. Rob, always yours in health.